what once was a Cadillac is now a disassembled conglomeration of components. Look at that. 2004 Cadillac DTS. It's got the 4.6 liter, I believe it is. V8 North Star engine. It's a quad cam. And this thing suffers from uh, a litany of leaks. So uh, rather than uh, fighting and fighting and fighting in chassis to get to all the components, because we have leaks on this side, we have leaks on this side, we have leaks on this side, and we have leaks on that, si that side. Rather than fighting the car to get a hold of all the components that are causing these leaks, we elected to just remove the engine and the transmission and the subframe and the axles and the struts from the vehicle. It comes down to one unit. And now we have easy access to work on our powertrain. So for those of you who missed it or are unaware, this thing came in a few days ago. A uh, customer stated that it was running rough. We had found misfires on cylinders one, three, five, and seven. Uh, what we had determined was one of the oxygen sensors was giving false data back to the ECM and the ECM did not know how much fuel to give the engine. We repaired the drivability condition, threw a set of spark plugs in it as well, and we moved on to the leak detection uh, segment uh, of our inspection, and we had found that the uh, Bank 1 valve cover gasket was leaking oil all over the place. The Bank 2 valve cover gasket was also leaking oil all over the place. We had also found that the serpentine belt and all the accessory drives or accessory drive components were caked up in oil that had been slung around from the drive belt. Uh, what it appeared to be is that the crankshaft front main seal was leaking and potentially the timing cover is leaking as well. It's really hard to tell when they get this bad uh, on the leak status scale because everything just gets coated and saturated with oil and it's very, very difficult to pinpoint the source of the leaks. But going with what we knew, we knew there was leaks here we knew there was leaks back here. We know there's a leak here, possibly here, probably the rear crankshaft seal. And we had also found some coolant leaks. There was engine coolant dripping at the bottom of the water pump housing here. And there appeared to be some washout going on at the gaskets between the water pump housing, which crosses over between the two cylinder heads. There's four gaskets in there, two on this side and two on that side, those are also known leakers on this engine. So what we elected to do was uh, either fix it right or not fix it at all. So we dropped the engine out of it and we're going to basically reseal this Cadillac engine, clean it all up, get rid of all the dirt and make this thing look shiny and brand new again. Now, Dave was gracious enough to remove this powertrain from the chassis. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and move in today and start disassembling all these components. We're gonna clean up everything that goes on and off of this engine, and we're gonna get the cover removed, crankshaft, the rest of these accessories. Uh, once that stuff's taken apart, we're gonna move back around, start disassembling the rear side of the engine, and we're gonna get this thermostat housing, or, or water pump housing and crossover pipe uh, disassembled and removed. We have parts on the way. They're not gonna be here for a couple days. So uh, this is gonna be a multi-part video, but we're gonna spread it out over a week or two. That way I don't inundate everybody with the same engine and same vehicle uh, for like three days straight. Cause I know you guys don't like that. Opening Z hood. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look who that guy is. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and finish stripping off the front of the engine cover here. We'll get the idler pulley and this, uh, that's the idler pulley, and uh, the belt tensioner. We're gonna remove these guys. We're gonna keep all the fasteners with their components. That way nothing gets lost because we're stripping this down to pretty much nothing. And we don't wanna get things lost, but yeah, look at this, this is nasty. Caked in oil from the leaks. That's what we don't like. So next, we'll get this uh, harmonic balancer slash crankshaft pulley. I believe I'm gonna need to use a puller to pull this. Let's just try it. Yeah, that's not gonna come off. So we need a three jawed puller to get a hold of this and pull it off the crank. Actually, I changed my mind. I'm not gonna use a three jawed puller. I'm gonna use a three fingered puller. This is a Astro tool. Uh, part number 78450 if anyone's interested. Um, the three jaw pullers are supposed to connect here, here, and here. 
and they just kind of pull this off. These ones, this one here, this is gonna lock into all these spokes right here. It's gonna turn and lock in and then effectively it's gonna perform the same function. So, let's pull the, uh, we'll pull that bolt out because there is a land on the end of this shaft right here that will contact the front of the crank and give it something to press against. So let's get this thing set up. Okay, you see right there in the middle, we've got that little land on the end of the rod. That's gonna act on the crankshaft. There we go, contacted. Now we just need to get a wrench, tighten down this bolt, and it's gonna pull this hub, taking the crank pulley with it and pulling it off of the crankshaft snout. Uh, I said snout. So hey, I'll take a, take a ratchet here. We're just gonna kind of crank down on this. I could use a, uh, a pneumatic tool or an impact tool, but I figure I'll just use this uh, manual ratchet. There's a kind of a rare occurrence on this channel. I tend to just default straight to the power tools. Okay, yeah, I'm out of patience. Slippage. There we go. Unit is removed. Now, someone has been in here before. I think they changed the oil pan gasket. So I'm gonna use some extra diligence to inspect uh, everything we can to make sure there's nothing that was faulty that has been uh, overlooked. For example, you can get grooves in your uh, sealing surface on the harmonic balancer here. And if you were to reseal this with a new seal, the seal is gonna ride in those grooves and it won't stop leaking. So I wanna make sure everything is reusable here and will not leak after we put it back together. I don't feel, we can see it, we can see where it rides, but I don't feel a ridge in there, which is good. If you can feel it with your finger, chances are there's excessive wear and uh, the component should be considered for replacement. This one I think is okay. The rubber looks good on it. It's not damaged from oil saturation. It may have been replaced once upon a time. Yeah, this unit can stay. As for the seal in the front cover, that does not look that great and is definitely gonna be replaced. I believe that's uh, of the original, the original build here. Anyway, let's grab a 10 millimeter. We'll pull these cover bolts off and get this crank cover or uh, timing cover removed from the engine. All right, let's get a magnet tray for our fasteners here. Let's pull these guys out. Uh-huh, not a good sign. That thing wasn't even tight. That tells me that that's not tight. If we find the original gaskets in here, then they are compressed and loosened. And would definitely be a cause of the sleep. And you can see based on the saturation effect here that it is primarily focused at the bottom uh, of this cover. Very good, okay, so that's all the fasteners. Let's get uh, let's get this cover pulled off of here. Uh -huh. There are our timing chains. And here is the gasket in question. Oh yeah, see how this is a rubber impregnated plastic gasket? It's got plastic and then the rubber seal is inside. See how flat that rubber is? Right there, it's almost completely flush with the plastic. Now, you'll find these metal inserts in this plastic. These prevent you from just tightening these bolts more and creating more clamping force uh, on the sealing surface. So once, it, uh, once that rubber compresses, it's done for and there's no amount of tightening that's gonna save it. So this thing is junk, we'll throw that off to the side. 
So, closer inspection under our cover here, and we see this engine is equipped with three timing chains. We've got one chain that drives the oil pump. That's this unit right here. And you've got a chain that drives these two camshafts on the number two bank, and another chain that drives those two camshafts on the number one bank, which means we should have, yep, one, two, three tensioners, three sets of guides. You're here in, uh, yeah, right there. This stuff looks pretty good. I don't see a bunch of slack. The tensioners have not extended all the way. Um, no, we don't plan on changing the timing chains while we're in here. Uh, this would be the time to do it, but at 46,000 miles, I don't see the need uh, or a reason to justify uh, going in that deeply. Because if you adopt that frame of men uh, mentality, uh, what point do you stop? It's like, hey, while we're in there, let's change the timing chains. Well, while we're in here, let's put bearings in it. Well, while we're in there, let's change the piston rings. You know, you, you, you can't stop. So at some point, you just gotta fix what's broken and, and walk away. Uh, if this was a 180,000 mile engine, yeah, I'd be all about putting new chains in it. But at 40 something K, uh, I don't really think that that justifies the expense uh, or the time. Unless my guy wants me to do it. That's a different story. Alrighty, moving on. We're now on the back side of the engine. Here's our throttle body. I want to go ahead and get this thing out of the way because we need to dig out all the bolts that are on this coolant crossover pipe. So we're going to switch from oil leaks to coolant leaks. Uh, I do realize we have to do the valve covers, but a lot of us saw some valve cover work on this engine a couple days ago. So we don't need to go back into the exact same thing right now. If I have time at the end of this video, we'll pull them apart but uh, it's not necessary at this uh, exact moment. Oh, there's our throttle body. She's all caked up with uh, carbon on the inside, and that's nasty. We'll clean that out before it goes back in. Here, let's uh, pluck this thermostat out right here and make sure all the coolant is drained. Yeah, we're good there. We're gonna put a new thermostat in it too. Get rid of that. I'm going to reseal this water pump slash thermostat housing. The pump is on the other side of this little conglomeration, but this housing section here also has a gasket. So we're going to pull this apart and reseal this as well. I think there's just four bolts, maybe five. One. And one hose, of course. And one dipstick. Well, that came out easy. What, look at that, thing just fell right out. Eat your heart out, I do cars. My dipsticks come out. Ha! Okay, I think that's uh, disconnected. Yeah, we're good there. And we can see the back side of our water pump. And there is the impeller on our water pump right there. Yeah, one of the least uh, favorite features on this engine is the water pump is belt driven from this camshaft right here so the camshaft runs through connects to this pulley then there's a little belt and a tensioner that runs the pulley the driven pulley on the water pump and the water pump is sandwiched between the cylinder head and this housing so let's get this stuff taken apart so we can pull this pump out of here we've got one 10 millimeter bolt on the top side here holding on to uh, this little bracket business or shield. It's a shield for the belt, really, not a bracket. Words. And then, of course, two more, two nuts down here. Ding. Come here. And there's our uh, water pump belt drive situation. So here, what I'll do, there's a little flat on the back side of this tensioner. Just untension that belt. Pull that guy off. Now, to remove the tensioner, see here's the there's the pulley, there's the arm, here's the bracket. This bracket is bolted on from this side of the housing. So we've got these two 10 mil studs right here, and that's gonna remove that water pump bracket. Tensioner bracket, water pump tensioner bracket. Or Yeah, that went. I'll put these bolts back in so they don't get lost. Now, let's pull the belt out. 
which is really hard because you've got to squeeze it around that little pulley right there. Look at that. It's got to fit right through there and then through again at the end of that pulley and the belt comes out. One of the reasons uh, folks didn't like this engine. Tight squeeze, super tight. So if the goal were to just remove the water pump, we'd be kind of okay. We can see way down that hole, there's one of the bolts, two, three, four, and five. And usually you just have to reach in real tight like and, uh, and work on those bolts. However, uh, we're gonna pull off this entire housing assembly because we need to gain access to those gaskets right down there. See that gasket down there? That guy, little orange looking thing. There's that one there. There's another one up high. And again, two on the other side. So we need to get this entire housing removed. Like a wasp nest or some dirt. Alrighty, so let's get the hardest ones first, which is gonna be the pair of bolts under this wiring harness that you can't really remove. So what we need to do, I don't know if you guys can see back there. Yeah, there's two bolts in here. This one right here, and then that one right there. Now that bolt is an absolute bear to get out of this car while this thing is in chassis. It's, it's almost impossible. And it's definitely not possible to do without really losing your cool. You just, yeah, you just can't get it. It's not, it's just not there. It won't let you. Yeah, I was hoping I could sneak that thing out of there with that low profile universal, but it just wasn't gonna happen. And keep in mind, this is a uh, half an arm's length down from the height of the hood. So if you were leaning over, it's impossible, nearly impossible to get this bolt out. And what's deceptive is there's one right next to it, down right there, you can see. And when you get that one out, you think you got them all, but you didn't because there's one more hiding out. Look, you still can't get it out. See that? It comes out, but the threads are released, but it will not come out of the component. That's fun. Well, anyway, let's get the one that we can reach. Going back in. turn there we go we're starting to drip some coolant out now I hear it uh, draining into the bucket yeah look at here can't get this one out either runs into this little uh, runs in the back of the transmission so both of those are captured fasteners that's cool Anyway, up top, there's a 15 and another 13 over here. These pass all the way through this manifold. That's not coming loose. Yeah, they bolt to the cylinder head in two locations. Unkick that one. Crustomatic. Crack this guy loose. There we go. Got that one out. Okay, so that's four on this side. There's gonna be four more on the other side. So let's go around this engine and get set up over there on that corner and we will disassemble the rest of this uh, coolant crossover business. So over here on the back side is where it gets interesting. Um, but real quick while we're here, I need to clarify something. I was calling this an EGR valve the other day when I was doing the spark plugs and the O2 sensor on this engine. And that is because this device looks remarkably similar 
to this device and I just failed to notice that the actual EGR valve was uh, inches away from me but this is the exhaust gas recirculation valve. You can see it's got the plumbing that runs into the exhaust manifold down here. What this thing will do is the valve will open up, exhaust gases will come through the tube and it will reintroduce them into the intake stream and then reburn them again. This valve is the secondary air injection pump. There is an air pump on the engine that feeds pressurized air into this valve and then this valve when it's open will send that air into the exhaust manifold uh, providing uh, oxygen in order to create a hotter burn and to reduce certain types of emissions under certain conditions. It's not a very popular system anymore but once upon a time uh, we were pumping air into the converters in order to get them to uh, the most uh, appropriate and efficient temperature. That's now achieved with fuel mapping with the ECM, but back in the day, we just pumped air into the exhaust. Trying all kinds of stuff to uh, meet the requirements of the Environmental Protection Agency. Okay. And as you can see, this EGR system is integrated into this coolant uh, crossover business. Oh. We'll bend this guy out of the way it's a flex pipe so we have no uh no worry about damaging it I'll put the bolt back where it goes now look at here there's a coolant temp sensor buried down there in the cylinder head disconnect that guy and we're going to be looking for one bolt here two bolts there's that other other little guy that that pair of bolts that you can't get out those guys are down there and then the other two up top a little bit higher, right here and right over here. I'm afraid that I have no choice but to get these guys out manually. Be careful. Well, it's also, Dave and I are talking about saving things. It's also in our nature just considering the job because you never know when something's going to break or get lost or not work properly and you happen to have, hey, the thing on the shelf that I've been saving for 15 years, that'll fit perfectly right here. So I guess it kind of comes with the territory. But if you really think about it, that thing you've been saving for 15 years, when you need it, you don't know where it is. <laughs> yeah, you're not wrong, but it's there somewhere. So if you need it bad enough, you'll go find it. You will go find it. That's just, that's the way it works. Hmm. Almost got that bolt out of there. That one's got a bunch of red stuff on it. Looks like it's uh was leaking coolant back here as well. It's got like the crusty Dex cool leak evidence going on with it. You know, I bet I won't be able to get these bolts out either. I'm concerned about taking them so loose where it locks my ratchet in and I won't be able to get the ratchet out. Uh -huh. uh, there we go. Ratchet has no more. And it doesn't turn by hand yet, that's fun. Turning that by hand is not happening. One sixty fourth of a turn at a time. Or about I don't know, 35 degrees maybe? Uh, don't check my math on that. I know that that's not an accurate conversion from degrees to uh, fractions. 
It worked in my head, though. But on paper, it won't work. Like communism. Isms. It's all the isms. The isms today are the problem. Everybody's fighting for their isms. And if we had no isms, maybe we would have less fighting. Because all the isms are causing more fighting. Like Cadillacism. The bolt's turning. Okay, the bolt is now unthreaded, but again, like the other side, it's not going to come out. yet there we go it's turning and the threads are out it moves but again this one's not coming out so that's six down I think there's two to go one here and then one behind this harness unplug this guy pull the harness back some fasteners I think no hang on I'm wrong something's not right there's something else holding on to this thing it's up top it's spilling a lot of coolant oh you know what there's a there's a throttle body extension here this little manifold connects to the intake manifold or it's crossover rather next to the intake manifold so we need to pull uh, I think the fuel lines does have to come out um well I know I need to get that hose clamp removed and then this thing should pop off of the intake manifold right so I have decided that this engine is designed to make people quit their job and I thoroughly believe that uh, it's like a giant Pandora's box slash catch 22 impossible Chinese puzzle uh, because I think I have to take the intake manifold off to uh, get this to come apart well I can probably get it apart without pulling the intake off but I think getting it back together would be a challenge so since it's here and since we're resealing everything I'm just gonna pull the intake off with it that's just uh, how this is working out so in order to get this off I need to get the fuel rails off let us unbolt the fuel rails. I should probably go ahead and disconnect the injectors before I do that. They might be hard to remove with the rails uh, attached. Put that guy back. There's another one hiding out down here. Disconnect this part of the harness. There we go. Now the harness is kind of out of the way. Good. Okay, so that's one side. Let's get the ones pulled 
off of the rear. Dave got most of them. You got them all, Dave? Yep. All okay, so that's good. Now, now we can go ahead and pull this fuel rail out of here. We got four studs. That one's stuck. Like I said, we're resealing everything, looks like. One more right here. I wonder if this is gonna come out easily or or not. Got a little fry driver here. Just give them some wiggles. The injectors are holding this in and they're secured with O-rings. So we have to overcome the friction of the O-rings. Or break them. There we go. That one's coming out. Second one's coming out. Those two came out. That's good. And the other side, I'm starting at the back because the rail terminates. And so all of my leverage is being applied to just one injector if I start in the back. There we go. Fuel rail's coming out. Leaking fuel everywhere. So now that uh, that fuel rail's out of the way, I can get to these fasteners for the clamps here. Um, one thing to note, look down in that hole down there. You guys see that? That's the starter. Yeah, that's the starter for this engine down there under the intake. Another reason the folks uh, really did not appreciate this particular motor. Okay, there's two clamps on this intake boot business. I'm gonna pull them both off. Take them both loose, rather, and see which one wants to give way. Neither. Here, let's just pry on it some. Okay, it's starting to come apart. Just not that intake boot right there. Oh, there we go. We have separation, but we can't go very far because now it's running into the transmission. But it is starting to come apart. There we go. Aha! Gravity. Okay, this thing's loose. Okay, let's throw the harness. We disconnected it when you guys weren't looking. Let's throw the harness over. There's one more connection connected to this little housing business, and I think we can sneak this out of here. I know, no, no, the bowl. I'm, I'm looking for. Oh, you were trying I'm looking to get for my extension. Yeah, and you're over there taking it apart. You were way ahead of me. I don't know where my gun is. It is under the engine by my left foot. This is where your gun is. You get it? Yeah. This it helps you to appreciate the power tools. It really does. Okay. I think. I think it's still stuck. It's less stuck than it was. Oh, the water pump pulley's getting me. And the bolt's sticking out between the transmission and the housing. There we go. Oh, there, now we got it. Look at that. Look at that stupid thing. Yeah. All right, so now that, that all, all that business is out of the way, we can see what we're, what we're looking for here. See this coolant passage right there? There's this coolant passage up here that the gasket's stuck to. Come here. Oh, there's that one there. That's the third one. Look at that gasket. There's our fourth one. And this one's not going to come off. That's pretty stuck. So we'll fry it off later with a screwdriver. Or or now, because I'm impatient. Stick my fingertips in there. Yeah, look at here. This one's even broken. Mm-hmm. Not really great for sealing coolant under pressure. Let's go check 
the uh, manifold side. So each of these guys was going in this location, in this location. Here, we can see the, uh, the other two gaskets. See how they're flattened out? There's a crack in the plastic right there. Right here at the top, see a little crack? Yeah, these were our leakers. Trouble is, is folks will diagnose this as a leak at the water pump and they'll throw a water pump in it, not realizing that the actual problem is right there. You can bet money if you got a coolant leak, it's coming from these guys. Well, we've come this far. Might as well keep going. Let's go ahead and pull these uh, coils and everything back out. Oh, it's already in here earlier. That's not gonna come off. And uh, we'll get these valve covers removed. Now, I think I need to remove this uh, water pump drive pulley before the valve cover comes off. I, I don't remember exactly, but I'm pretty sure that that pulley has to go away. So what I'll do is unbolt it, and then if that's hanging us up, then uh, we'll pull that pulley off of there and then uh, kind of go from there. Yeah, I can say it's probably been four or five years since I've done, uh, done a water pump on one of these things. And I, I just don't remember. I don't remember. But something tells me I'm going to have to pull that thing apart. Anyway, as of right now, we're pulling the coils off. Get these guys out of the way. Little rubber guy down there. Beautiful. Okay, more 10 millimeter action. There's a ground uh, gravity. We've got a little ground strap right here. Pull that guy out. And then we'll get to the uh, perimeter bolt. It's a shoulder bolt that I just dropped one. The gravity is strong against me today. All of these bolts have uh, witness marks on the head as if they were uh, removed at some point. I don't know if there's center bolts in this or not, so we're going to take these out. Uh, no, there are no center bolts. Okay. Sometimes you have them and sometimes you don't. And this is the time of you don't. See, we got that one already. That one there. Oi, this extension is not good. It's worn out on the drive or the driven side. It's falling off of my, my gun here. Yeah. Okay, the cover is loose. And... Looks like I do have to remove this uh, water pump pulley right here. So we're going to do that with a power steering pulley puller little device that's going to engage the uh, the lip right here around this pulley and then press against the stud in order to remove it so we've got two halves of this clamshell those are going to slip around it that slips over it to hold on to it and not that one maybe this one uh, negative that one doesn't fit Front row. Yeah, it's gonna have to be that one. So this threaded stud is going to act on the camshaft and it's going to pull on this apparatus here and then pull this unit off the cam. It's just a press fit. So what we'll do, the ratchet wrench on the the stud part here. We're just going to tighten this down. Again, it's pushing against the cam and pulling the pulley off of the cam. Now it might break, which it looks like it's going to. If it breaks, uh, these pulleys are available. They're just plastic. So if I, uh, if I snap this thing off, which it's breaking, 
then I'll just break it all the way and get a new one. Let's see what uh, what our mode of failure is here. It's probably pulling off the little plastic lip that's on the actual pulley itself. Let's see what's happening. Yeah, yeah, we're just pulling the uh, the puller like straight through the actual pulley. That's all that's happening here. Very loose tolerances, I think. It, I think it moved, but we'll just rotate it 180 degrees and try again. See what happens. Let's try it like that. It's already running sideways. Yeah, we broke it. I'm just going to send it and see what happens. Ooh, I have an idea. Hose clamp. I know what to do here. I will put a hose clamp on it instead of that factory little collar piece. That way I can really, really wrench down on this and hopefully it'll squeeze it enough to actually pull that pulley off. It's either gonna work or it's not, but I think we're already into it with a, a pulley replacement at this point. I've been prying on it and scratching it and something just cracked and broke or I stripped out my hose clamp. What a piece of crap. Look, I stripped the hose clamp out. Hmm. Air hammer, we're getting close. Snap. There we go. Got it. There she is. That's the pulley. And that little plate right there, that's the reason that this guy wouldn't come apart. That little guy. So let's clear the tools out of here. We'll work that thing off. You guys go over there. It's all coming back to me now. Yes, I remember this. Don't remember that. These are a seal. Need to get a new one of those. go voila well one thing I can say is the inside of this engine is super clean there is uh, almost zero sludge whatsoever nothing there's nothing going on inside this motor it's brilliant it's immaculate almost perfect but what's not perfect are these gaskets right here I found a source of a leaker see this one see how it's rolled and folded over. Somebody attempted to reseal these gaskets once and they did not get this gasket set up properly. They had it smashed just like that. See that? It was smashed here and it was smashed here. I don't know if that was a 100% a massive leak or a small leak, but it wasn't right. It's been a while since these were done. I don't believe they're original because they are blue. Which leads me to believe these were Felpro gaskets. That's how you know they're good because they're blue. But uh, these ones here, are uh, they weren't installed right. Something's wrong. They need to be replaced. These guys are going away. Yeah, look at that. Not okay. Not normular. Alrighty, around here on the back side, we have to pull the air pump its bracket, pull the hose off and lay this thing aside, then we can uh, get the cover removed. 10 mil again. We'll get uh, 
these guys disconnected down here. Let this thing kind of dangle back over there. That's good, I think. Let's see, no cam seal on this one. I believe I can leave the coils in actually. So let's just pull these perimeter bolts out. Oh, another ground strap down here. See that guy? Ground strap. Let's see a couple more up top. On the left, gravity on the ground. Okay, here comes our cover. And this gasket is in good shape. That one looks good. But it was still leaking because there's oil everywhere dripping out of it. Okay. Well, we've come this far. Might as well keep going. Look at that. Look at that intake manifold bolt. It wasn't even tight. Look at that one. Yeah, it needs intake manifold gaskets too. Look at those. Oh, that one was kind of tight. You hear that one click? Wow. Four out of five had no torque on them. Let's try this one. Loose. That one was tight. That was sort of touching. Yeah. Yeah, we're uh, definitely going to do intake manifold bolts as well. Gaskets. Gaskets, not bolts. I was looking at bolts when I said that. Hmm. Yep, there's our starter. That's the starter. We got the knock sensors, one there, one there. And I see some oil down here, but I'm not really certain what kind of source we have for said oil. Head gaskets. Look at that. I wonder if this has the North Star head gasket leak. That's not cool. But it's not pooling up. Like not a whole bunch. I think that's just normal. Probably just normal for this engine. Everything leaking. Okay. Uh, let's take a gander down inside of our valves. And we'll see what our valves are looking like. See if they're all carboned up or if they're just as clean as the camshafts. Get a little closer in there. Magnificent. This thing is super clean. There's almost nothing built up on anything. It's fantastic. Good. These are good. And those are good. And you guys see there's a bunch of plastic down in there that fell from the, from the intake when I took it apart. Uh, have no fear, we can blow this out and it will not be a problem. So another thing to notice is that only two of these intake valves are open at a time. We've got this cylinder right here, I think that's number five. No, no, one, three, yeah, it's number five. And then two, number four, I think that's four. Those ones are open. So there's only two that are open at a time. That means two cylinders are on the uh, compression stroke, two cylinders are on the exhaust stroke, and then two cylinders are on the power stroke because it's a V8 four cycle. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna plug the holes that have the valves that are open with some towels. Blow the debris off the top section, then we'll blow the debris out of the ones that have the uh, valves that are open Replug them and then blow the rest of the debris out of the other holes. All right, air gun coming in, blue towels coming in. Uh oh, I have no air pressure. Ruh row. I wonder if my compressor is off, and it is. Oh, okay. Anyway, we get some air built up and then we'll blow this thing out and then go from there. So, while the compressor is coming up, we'll just throw some uh, fender covers here over the valve train. 
this will prevent uh, contamination. We got another one for the front valve cover area. Let's go ahead and just put that on there. Nice and sealed up like. Good. One blue towel. And for the port right in front of us. Two blue towels. Ah, ah, ah. Three cookies. So now, we can blow the rest of this debris out of here. Wipe this down a little bit, make it nice and shiny like. There we go. Same thing on the front side. It doesn't have to be spotless, we just gotta get rid of all the nasty. There we go, beautiful. Okay, this is uh, this section is good. Throw the towel over these just to make sure no 10 millimeter sockets fall in there. Get one more right here, that's good. Now that's nice and, nice and safe and secure. And at this point, I think we're close to a parts hold. Um, I haven't decided if we're going to take this engine off of the transmission yet and replace the rear main seal. Uh, I know we need to do the front. Now, my customer tells me that they had, uh, someone had already replaced the oil pan gasket or the, the sealant, sealant inside of the gasket at some point. And what we had found out is that there's a broken bolt right here uh, inside of this front structure cover. So, I... Uh, I'm on the fence about it. I may end up taking this engine off of here, flipping it over on the stand and fixing this broken bolt business. Because if this leaks right here, and I think it might be, um, all of my efforts uh, right now are gonna be wasted. Well, I think we are going to uh, take this engine off the trans and flip it over and do the bottom end work as well. I uh, haven't decided yet, and my customer hasn't decided that yet, but uh, it looks like that might be the direction we're gonna go. Uh, regardless at this point i think this has gone on long enough um we're kind of at a stopping point because i don't have parts and again the engine is attached to the transmission uh, there are decisions to be made so uh we're gonna have to circle back to this thing uh, at a later time uh, for the uh, next edition uh, of this uh, 4.6 liter cadillac north star engine so guys that being said i have nothing more to offer you on this particular video uh, other than a thank you for watching this video as always, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think about this situation in the comment section down below. Do not forget to tap that like button while you're down there. And most importantly, have yourselves a great day. See you guys later in a video, in a North Star, in a 4-6 Nightmare, in a transmission.